All right, guys, uh, pre-calculus here. Hopefully everybody understands uh, the inverse idea. Um, but I do want to um, talk about some basic rules because um, we talked in class about the idea that, you know, part of some of our issues that we need to clear up are some just basic rules of algebra that we need to make sure we understand. And um, before we do that, I do want to do one inverse problem here. So I want to take a uh, look at a function, and that function is 2 over... 3x minus 5. So I want to make sure that we know how to find the inverse of this. So let's just kind of go over it real quick here. Remember, change the f of x to a y is our first step here. And we're good to go here. Now we got to switch the y into an x. And be careful. If you're like me, sometimes you get a little sloppy and your y's and x's start to kind of look the same. So make sure you really emphasize which is an x and which is a y. All right, first of all, I don't really like this fraction. To be honest with you, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 minus 5. That's going to wipe the fraction out on that right side, at least, leaving behind a 2. But over here, I have to multiply by the 3y minus 5 as well. So that's going to give me 3xy minus 5x. So now notice that um, I have one y. It is right there. I'm going to point my arrow right at it. So that's the only y that I have to get by itself. I don't have two y's. I don't have to worry about factoring any kind of y out or anything like that. I only have that one y. So first thing I do is I need this negative 5x to get the heck out of here. So I'm going to go ahead and add 5x to both sides. So I get 3xy equals, I'm going to put the 5x first. I guess you could do 2 plus 5x. doesn't really matter, but I'll put the 5x plus 2. And lastly, again, I'm trying to get this y right here, put a little arrow towards it by itself. So if I divide both sides by 3x, the 3x's cancel out, and I get a uh, 3x over here as well. So what happens is I end up with y equals 5x plus 2 all over 3x. So that is the inverse function. And since I switched the x's and y's and solved, I'm going to now classify this as an inverse function. So the inverse function of this original function right here is 5x plus 2 divided by 3x. Oh boy, I'm going to fix that there because that should be a 3 x right there. I kind of made it look a little funny. So 5x plus 2 all divided by 3x would be the function. Um, so let's move on now. And like I said, I do want to talk about some basic rules, okay? Um, some basic rules of um, working with, um, you know, functions and variables. Um, the first thing is we got to make sure that we know how to um, combine, okay? There are several ways to combine functions. We can add them, we could subtract them, we could multiply them, um, and I'll abbreviate there, and we could divide them. So let's start off with um, 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. And again, this is a trinomial, three terms, talked about that in class, and the largest exponent is the 2 right there, so it's a uh, second degree polynomial. And here comes another function we're going to do is a real basic one, 4x minus 6. And that is a binomial, two terms, and um, the largest exponent is right there. It's just a 1, so that's a first degree, and this one over here was a second degree polynomial. So um, if we add them, we simply add them together, and when you add them together, you combine like terms. Adding's pretty easy. So you'd get the 3x squared, the negative 2x and the 4x are like terms. That would make a 2x. Um, and then the 5 and the negative 6 are like terms. That would make a negative 1. Um, we could also subtract them. Now, um, we've had some issues with this before. When you subtract, remember, anybody after the subtraction has to take on that negative sign. So I would actually turn that into a negative 4x and a positive 6. So that would be a negative 4x and a positive 6. So that would make this a 11 back here, because a 5 and a positive 6 would make an 11. And the negative 2 and the negative 4x would make a negative 6x. Um, we can also um, multiply the functions together. And we multiply, it's just repeated distribution. So it would be 3x squared times 4x. That's 12x to the third, because uh, x squared and another x would make an x to the third. We'd get a minus 18x squared. And then I got to distribute the negative 2. So that's negative 8x squared and a positive 12x. So just take your time, write it all out. 5 times 4x is a 20x. 
and then 5 times a negative 6 is a negative 30. So notice that we had a trinomial, 3 terms, times a binomial, two, 2 terms, and 3 times 2 is 6. So after the multiplication, there should be a total of 6 terms, and let's see if some of them can be combined together. It does look like the negative 18 and the negative 8 can be combined, and uh, the negative um, 18 and the negative 8 would combine to make a negative 26x squared. And let's see here, the 12x and 20x would make a 32x, and the minus 30 there doesn't have anybody to combine with. So that's the multiplication, okay? Um, lastly, we have division. So let's say we have 3x squared minus 2x plus 5, all divided by 4x minus 6. Now, when we're dividing, we're only allowed to divide or cancel things out if they're the same factor. For example, if I have 8 divided by 6, see 8 is 4 times 2, 6 is 3 times 2. So the common factor of 2 could be canceled, but you have to factor first, and then you get 4 thirds. That's how you reduce fractions. Same thing when you're working here. You have to find the factors, and um, can this top even be factored? I know the bottom could be factored. Notice the bottom, I could take out a 2. There's a 2 that's common. The first thing you should always look to do is take something out, and I get... Uh, 2x minus 3. And again, you could always double check 4x minus 6. On top, uh, there's nothing common I could take out between 3, 2, and 5. I can't take out any x's. Um, I could try to do my factoring technique here. Let's see, 3x and x makes the 3x squared. Um, 1 and a 5 can make the 5. So let's see here, if I have a 15x on the outside and a 1n. It's not going to get me what I need here. Let me try the 5 right here and the 1 right here. That's going to get me a 3x and a 5x. And if I'm careful, if I make that a negative 5x and a positive 3x, something weird is going to happen here. So just hang on with me for a second. I'm going to get a 3x squared, and I'm going to get a negative 5 in the back. Oh, that's a problem. I need a positive 5 in the back. So what you realize, basically, is this top here is not really factorable. It can't be factored in a nice way. It almost looked like it was going to work, but it was going to generate a negative 5, and it needed a positive 5. So be careful. So obviously, this is pretty much all you can do. There's nothing more that can be done with this right here, okay? Now, let me show you another example where a little bit more could be done. So let's say we have x squared. Um, minus 9x plus 20, and that's a, uh, a second-degree trinomial, and we're going to divide that by, let's see here, oh, x squared minus 16, okay? So on top, um, I could try to do the takeout. There's nothing common I could take out, so it's a trinomial, so I'm going to have to do my normal factoring here, x times x makes the x squared. A 20, I need to multiply to get 20, add to get the 9 in the middle, so I'm thinking 5 and 4, because 5 and 4 can multiply to get 20, but I need them both to be negative, and this should work out real nice, because they're going to multiply to get the positive 20, add negative 4x on the outside, negative 5x on the inside to make the negative 9x. That's the beauty of checking your work. You can know we're right. This bottom here, right away you should recognize binomial with a subtraction sign. And 16 is a perfect square. It's 4. 4 squared is 16. So this is a difference of perfect squares. I recognize that right away. So I get x minus 4 times x plus 4. Now, what do I notice here? I factored. The top has two factors, just like 8 was 2 times 4 in the previous uh, example I showed you. The bottom has two factors, just like 6 was 2 times 3. And I notice that they have a common factor. The top and the bottom have a common factor, x minus 4. I can cancel it out. I'm only allowed to cancel out if there's a common factor. So that was my common factor, so I get x minus 5 on top left over, and x plus 4 on the bottom left over. So be careful with dividing, is, is, is oftentimes you can't really do a whole lot with division unless you factor first and get rid of a common factor, and then it can go away. But it's got to be the exact same common factor, okay? Um, with the time I have remaining, I want to um, go over adding and subtracting um, rational functions with you guys real quick, and we did a little bit about this in class. Class. So let's kind of go over another example here. Um, 
here is my um, two fractions that I want to subtract. Um, you could add, you could subtract, you get the idea that the process is basically the same. I want to um, subtract, and when you're subtracting with fractions, you need a common denominator. The easiest way to get a common denominator is to take the denominator you have and simply multiply them together. Now, you could actually go ahead and multiply this out, um, and you'd get an x squared. You'd get a negative 3x on the inside once you get the negative 5x and 2x and combine. And then you get a negative 10 on the, on the end. But I'm just going to leave it like this for right now so you could see the problem, so you could see how it's going on here. Now, what happens here is the x plus 2, for him to have that common denominator, he needs an x minus 5. And I'll gladly put an x minus 5 down there, but that means, of course, i got to put one on top. And then I have to distribute. So I get a 2x squared minus 10x. Now, back here, he has the x minus 5, so I need to put a x plus 2 down there, so he has that common factor. And that means i got to put an x plus 2 on top. Now, this is where you've got to be extra careful. Looks like a 3, smells like a 3, but it's really a negative 3. That negative goes with that top 3 right there. So i got to think of negative 3x, and then i got to distribute the negative 3 again, which makes a negative 6. So be very, very, very careful when you see that minus sign there. It does need to be distributed with that top uh, 3 right there. So on top, I get a 2x squared. I get a uh, negative 13x, and I get a minus 6. Now, on the bottom, I have these nice um, factors here. X plus 2, remember, factors are any two items being multiplied. Those are factors. Um, and again, like I said, you could have multiplied those out, but again, I, I'm thinking maybe there's some common factors that I can cancel out. So I do have to factor the top, and that top doesn't really look like it could be factored. I'm going to try it out here. I'm going to get a 2x and an x. That'll generate the 2x squared. I mean, 6, I can do a, a 1 here and a 6 here. And this is really just trial and error. That's going to get me a 12x and a 1x. Ooh, now 12x and a 1x could make a 13x. Let's let's try it out here. If this was a 1 and this is a 6, let's just see what it, what's going to take this to work. Because it, it, it looks and smells like it might work, but who knows here. Okay, I need it to be a negative 6. So let's make the uh, negative 12. Oh, there's going to be a problem. Look, if I want to get that negative 13, I need a negative 12x. And I need that negative 1x to make the negative 13x. But the problem with doing that is, and making these both these last terms both negative, when they multiply, I get a positive 6. And I needed a negative 6 right here. So as close as this seemed, again, it was like that other problem we saw, as close as it was to look like it was going to factor, it's not, which means there's no common factors between the top and bottom. So you would really just kind of leave your answer like this. If you wanted to go ahead and multiply that bottom out, I, full credit, I wouldn't take anything off. So just be very careful with that type of problem there. Um, so hopefully that um, helps you understand, whoop, hopefully that helps you understand um, subtracting or adding fractions. Now let's take the same pair, okay, um, the 2x over x, oh boy, what was it, x plus 2, and let's multiply it by the uh, what was it, uh, 3 over x minus 5. Okay, so now I want to teach you here, multiplying the rules change a little bit. When you multiply fractions, you do not need a common denominator. You literally go straight across the top, straight across the bottom. So 2x times 3 is 6x, straight across the bottom. But you got to treat these as binomials, right? They're a binomial to binomial. Got to, when you multiply those, you got to think x squared. You got to think a negative 5x you got to think of a 2x, and you got to think of the minus 10. Then I can go ahead and combine. I get a 6x on top. On the bottom, I get x squared minus 3x minus 10. And again, the only way something can cancel if it's the exact same factor. And on top, my factors are actually 6 times x, because there's multiplication right there. So 6 times x, so those are my factors. On the bottom, I mean, if I can go back to here, I mean, really, this is, remember, x plus 2 times x minus 5. Those are my factors, and there's nothing common that I can cancel out. So this right here is probably going to have to be my final answer because um, I don't have anything I could factor out there. Now, the last thing I want to show you, the last part of this video is division when you're working with these things. Um, if I'm going to divide...
these together. Now, um, this is actually easy, but it's just a rule you have to remember. We don't like division, to be honest. We really don't. We'd rather use multiplication. So division is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So when you multiply, you you leave you change the division to multiplication. Okay, the first guy stays the same. This guy right here on the left, he never changes, leaving the same. But instead of dividing by this, you're going to multiply by its reciprocal, which is just flipping it over x minus five over three. And then of course you multiply, but be careful. This is a mo uh, binomial, so I got to distribute. So I get two x squared minus ten x. On the bottom, again, one more time, this is a binomial, so I get a 3x plus 6. And, I mean, there were no common factors. I would have saw it right away. Like, if this was an x minus 5 and this was an x minus 5 right here, um, I could have canceled them out because they were common factors top and bottom. They canceled them. It just it didn't happen here. So this would be my final answer. So be careful. Multiplication straight across the top, straight across the bottom. Division, I don't really like. I'd rather change it to multiplication, but you got to multiply by the reciprocal of the second guy or the second um, rational function there. So um, hopefully those are some basic rules that can help you go over. And don't forget about that first inverse problem we did. And we're going to do some problems like this in class, um, inverses and just kind of working with some basic rules to help you guys um, get ready so we can move on and you guys are all understanding everything. So hopefully this helped a little bit and um, we'll get back with you guys on Friday.